start this. Go ahead and clear your screen. <clears throat> I'm going to mute everybody and find your upright seat. <clears throat> we may get some wanderers coming in straggling a little bit, but we'll just get to it. <clears throat> so remember when you're doing your seated stillness practice, it isn't holding on to yourself still. It's actually anything and everything that your body might want to do. So breathing, facial changes, right? Squinting or opening, head movements, neck movements, shoulder. So really you're just settling in and connecting to your body. And often your body is making requests in the form of pain, in the form of just sort of, sort of an intuitive desire to, to explore something. And also it's an opportunity to sort of unplug, you might say, from whatever you were doing just a moment ago. Unplug from everything that's going on in the larger world, all the sort of madness and whatnot. <clears throat> and boil down, settle down to just the simplest possible state of being. Consciousness housed in a body. Connected to that body through the nervous system, the various organs within you working tirelessly with an intelligence that we can't really even fathom, right? Just that intelligence the body has to have everything work well, to regenerate cells, to, you know, each organ doing its specific job. So many times we get in the way of that with our stress, with our projecting our mind elsewhere into something that's going on. So this practice of reclaiming and just settling yourself into this un, they call it the uncarved block in Taoism. It's natural, absolutely natural. Nothing extra, nothing overlaid. There's even an aspect of it where you go beyond your name beyond your story of who you are, <clears throat> not that those things go away or aren't meaningful, but that there's a place where you're even more natural, more original than that. And we want to stay connected to that aspect of ourselves. So final minute or so here. And Taoism would say, the still point in your middle is that unchanged, undisturbed, original essence. And it's a pivot point from where we can move, where we can be adaptable and appropriate with whatever's going on. So sensing that idea of a still point or a general stillness. Final 30 seconds or so. <clears throat> Right into our three opening movements. Slide hands forward, drop the head gently, slightly round the back. <clears throat> Slide the hands back, elbows back, lift and look up. <coughs> Two more. <coughs> Gentle, 
undulation like movements just to get this pumping through the body happening. Settle to the middle and go right into rotations. One hand forward, one back, a little turning to the right or left and just alternating side to side, feeling all the little subtle moving parts. <clears throat> Back to middle, arms hanging, soft little lateral bend, tilt, and tilt. You can add to that as you tilt to your right, left wrist floats. This allows you to sort of spill over a little bit more. Possibly even reaching a little bit up. And back to middle. Shoulder blades forward, up, back, down. <clears throat> Switch directions of those circles, back and up, forward and down. And try this challenge of alternating. Right goes forward and up. As it goes back and down, the left comes forward and up. And as it goes back and down, the right comes forward and up. It's just the shoulders. And reverse. <clears throat> And bend elbows, bring the hands up, elbows out and up, down, in and squeeze, down, out and up, down, in and squeeze, down, one more. And elbows back, elbows down, hands going up, elbows forward, hands go over the shoulders, elbows up, hands slide down the back. back. One more. And Elbows out to the side. Open. Close. Open. Close. Open. Close. And down. Down. Scoot back a little bit on your chair so you feel very stable. Load, push, load, down, switch. Now, one leg out, foot and ankle, point and flex. Invert, evert, that little small move. 
circles. Reverse. Switch. Point and flex. Invert, evert. <clears throat> Circles. Reverse. And then shift forward, front edge, swivel steps, one, two, three, four, hold, in, two, three, four, pause, once more, same leg, turning from that hip, internal, external, Switch, one, two, three, four, and hold, one, two, three, four, back, once more. Middle, forward fold, hinge. <clears throat> Turning on the hands, elbow to point forward, sit upright, leaning back, upright, folding at the hips, upright, leaning back. And Middle, dragon takes a bow. This arm position, hips between legs, <clears throat> head and shoulders down between the arms. Sit upright and then lean slightly back. <clears throat> One more. And dragon stirs the sea from leaning back. Go to your right buttock, bow, and get into the dragon arm position. Sweep across, back and around. Moving from the hips as the primary moving place, but allowing for that gentle roll of all the spinal joints. Switch directions after three. Legs closer. Arms, wings, turn palms up if you can. Go for this reach. If not, just do what you can do. And then reach one arm a little higher. Other, other, other. And then both, both reaching and wings. And then forward, continue going forward and up, lift the chest, arch and create almost a gentle back bend here. Like you're getting ready to back dive off a high dive. Uh. And then reversing that, come forward, down, and closing our joint mobilization seated module. Standing Qigong, arms hanging, slide your feet back. First, let's do sit up or stand up and sit down. Remember, it's all just from the hips. 
we move from the correct middle, then there needs be there need be nothing extra going on, which is what usually exhausts us and folks with Parkinson's. It's, it's that extra activity that's getting in the way of you walking or moving your arm in, in, in a specific way. So it's letting all that drop off, slough off, and then still realizing you can move quite effectively. Stay standing. Now three squats where you don't sit in the chair. Sink. Right. And feel how this almost like a, an accordion compress and open, right? We're also doing that for our tissue. We're sort of squishing the legs and then extending and the back is rounding and opening. And then stay standing, rock a little forward, a little bit into the toes, arms gently swing forward, rock back to the heels, they swing back, loose as can be. Remember this idea that when you rock forward, part of you stays back to stabilize you. When you rock back, part of you stays forward to stabilize you. And it's that interplay of when going forward, part stays back. When back, part stays forward. That's the experience of moving from your middle. That's the experience of controlling from the middle. Next time you're back in your heels, open your shoulder wells, arms float. Rock to your toes. Reach out and dip into the distance, way out. Rock to your heels, coming in through the upper gate, Rock to the middle, settling down, hands to the middle, and then tail goes back, sinking, arms softly go long, and then push through the earth and rise back to standing. Let's do this a few more times. Rock back. Rock forward. Rock back. Rock middle. <clears throat> forward, back, middle, through. In a formal traditional setting, when I go to my 10 day retreats, we'll do this 20, 25 times, which is like a trance. So it's also shifting our brain and nervous system into a state of presence. Slow, soft movement. One more. Not only that, but it's doing what it's doing for our pivots, our joints, for the tissue, and it's also attending our mind to our middle down about navel area. <clears throat> and shogun, wing, roll, fold over the top, settle, settle, settle to your middle. Middle embrace. Notice shoulders are not shrugged, elbows are not out, hands are not active. None of that's happening. It's soft, it's relaxed, but they're also not limp and lifeless. There's awareness through the fingertips. Hands cross a little bit. Left, right, yin, yang. Weight goes down through one leg as you extend that arm like you're trying to touch the floor, float this wrist up. Switch. This foot is empty. Switch. This foot is empty. Do this a few more times. Make a differentiation. What usually is happening in the beginning when people see that, oh, that foot is empty. First thing they do is pull, pull the leg up off the ground prematurely. Rather than emphasize or focus on this softening through the full leg to the point where that leg's empty. And then change. Same idea, softening, waiting long enough. And eventually the foot just kind of 
pops up off the ground because it's not being used. So master that skill. Also, what's happening in this one is at first, I'm going to mimic the sort of outer body version like this. And that's kind of where you need to start. But look over time for the internal mechanism, the more subtle version where it's happening right in through here. And you're going right down and through. And this one's becoming empty. And then find that sort of washing machine inside. Now the wheel, top hand wheels way out as bottom hand comes back and up the back, right? Up and under like you're tickling your armpit and then they just wheel. Octopus tentacles, same thing happening in the lower body, changing through the leg of the, the arm that's going down and then going down through the other. And again, at first it's this outer body version very overt, maybe even exaggerated. And then once the space is cultivated, then it can become a little more subtle, a little more efficient. And you feel this internal wheel, wheel, reverse the wheel, down the back and way out up the front, retracting like you're gonna tickle your armpit and go down as the other one comes up, retract track and just wheel the hand that's going down go through the leg down. outer body version and then to the inner mechanism version loosening unbuckling decoupling releasing all those verbs that describe the direction we want to go, which is an unbuckling, uh, undisentangling that whole direction. And then finally, press and rise. Press and rise. Press. Two more each side. The hand that rises soft and loose. The hand that presses a little bit of activity in. And then it softens as the other hand becomes active. And then other hand. Now keep that first hand down, bring the other one down, find even. Show home. So that's a module, a collection of similar qigongs that balance each other out, help each other. Fingertips touch, hands extend out in front, Tai Chi straight, they're at upper chamber, sternum to collarbone, that section, open. Go to your right leg, that would be that way, left leg empty, close. Opening, chest, shoulders, all the way to the fingertips, close. When the front closes, the back opens. When the front opens, don't let the back close. So that's another <clears throat> sort of anatomical, physiological idea is though the front opens and closes, the back always stays open even when the front is opening. So that's why we don't, you don't see the body going crank because that would crunch the back. It's more open, but keep your back open. That's where the nerves flow out from. That's where the chi channels flow out from as well. Let's go to the middle, drop to the middle basin, sternum to navel, that section. Elbows are a little bit bent, open like it's an expanding energy ball between your palms. Go to your right foot and then close. Open. All the way to the tips of the fingers. Close. 
two more. Left leg empty, right leg empty. Find that internal mechanism where that change is happening. Lower base and drop right in front of the groin area. Open, close. Opening going into your right leg, left leg empty, close. Executing this with zero lead or tension-based strength and only with song, soft, supple, loose, hydraulic, easy, two more. So that when you're doing these sort of seemingly innocuous, right? Someone could watch you doing this and go, you're not doing anything for yourself. But when you look at it through the lens of, I'm practicing my hydraulics, so I don't want to do too much as I train the soft and supple, lest I lose that hydraulic quality. Shogun, settle. Hands come down. One arm swinging forward from the pendulum, the other arm swinging back from the pendulum. The arm that is back, empty that foot and then change leg and swing on. Chain, chain. The emphasis is on the down. Down creates the up, down. So it's still going through the leg. So the leg is kind of gently compressing and uncompressing each time you go into the leg, right? So, and a little bounce, subtle. So also you're looking for the middle of you where you're executing both the lower body and the upper body. So both the change and the rotation that causes the swing, find that place in your body where both the one place. And the only way to find it is to loosen up and move with more looseness. And then let the arms come to settle. Ring the temple bell. Be so soft that the hands smack. You can hear the smack of my palm hitting my hip and the back of the hand. <clears throat> now option we've been adding to this is step a little wider. Gives you a little more room. And as well, if balance permits, when you turn to your right, swivel on the ball of the left foot and then turn. So adding a little more range, but don't lose your middle. So your middle should retain its floating, undisturbed quality as you add this turning of the leg bone in the hip socket, sort of ringing out. And as this increases, the arms might sweep a little more sort of up in the sky like a helicopter, and therefore they'll smack the body more at the front rib cage and back rib cage, kidneys, liver, and spleen. So now you're getting a little sonic massage, a boom, boom. And then let's slow it back down. And then this version where we go back to small, but you try to create feet don't move, but you get a little ankle, little knee, little hip, all 24 vertebra. So it's very internal, but yet you're allowing for all those internal spaces to move. So very subtle. And then let's slow it down, come back to neutral. Now, bend elbows, hands come up. So we already have done this one many times before, that swing. What we add to that, if you watch me do it, is as my arms swing, I do like a, a tenth of a squat and then back up. So it's boom, up, boom. Now what we finally add is that you don't come out of the uh, squat position and you just swing 
swing, swing, swing. And you kind of stay in this little subtle bounce. Again, the emphasis is the down. So it's the down, 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 down. And the up is happening because you're so loose. These are all part of what's called shui show, collections of exercises that swing the arms, swing the body. And on the way up to dismount, you come back to this position here. Let the arms come down. One more shui show. Open, hug, open. Switching each time. Tony. And loose. Shogun. Silk reeling qigong, a little, uh, a couple from that. Standing as you are, turn your feet out just a little. Knees soften. Remember your qua, groin area. Scoop. So you guys do your right hand. I'll come up close. So folded, folded. Flatten, slice. Drop. Scoop, roll, slice to the fingertips. Scoop, following the fingertips, roll, slice. Scoop and turn that way. Slice and turn that way. This qua open. <clears throat> As you come this way, this qua open. This qua open. Scoop. Slice. Scoop. Slice. Soft body. Finding that place, that one place that allows you to execute this, both what's happening upper and lower body by being relaxed. Switching arms. Scoop. Roll to a flat. Slice. Fall. Scoop. Roll. Slice. Scoop and turn a little bit. This quad opens. Slice. This quad opens. Qua meaning groin area where the leg and hip joint meet. And not that I suggest you do it unless it's very, very appropriate, but you can see what I'm doing now. My legs have ended up, I'm just sort of letting them slowly, my feet heel toe, so that this same exercise can be done in a deeper stance, which really challenges here and moves there. But it's also totally right just to do it standing up comfortably. And you can still be practicing the qua, the waist, and the movement. One more. Let that arm come down. This one can be a little tricky at first. Here, the elbow rises, tickle your armpit. So just do that movement a couple times. That's the key little change right there. Externally rotated, internally rotated. Now, once you've got it underneath, then like a snake just creeping down along till the arm is completely straight, and then it can just so easily turn, palm out, fold. Tickle the armpit, and slide it down. Corkscrew. Add to it the little turn. Turn towards, turn away. 
turn towards, turn away, towards. So these all come from Chan Se Gong or silk reeling practice. Silk reeling focusing on spirals. So again, Karen, make sure you get to here. Then you get to here. Tickle your own armpit, there you go. And follow the fingertips down, yes. And then totally relaxed, then it just rolls open. So it's a very efficient, it's a practice of doing something pretty involved, but without a bunch of extra crap going on, which is what usually happens. People end up throwing the arm out, trying to do all this stuff when it's just, it's just here and it's just there. And so this is a training of Tai Chi principles of there's a way through to do something pretty, you know, involved that is not difficult. Switch here, tickle the armpit, slide it, turning towards and away. Continue towards and away. Add a nice little brain challenge. As the left hand starts going down, right hand comes up. Tuck that under. As the right hand goes down, the left hand comes up. As one is tickling armpit, the other's turning palm up. As one goes down, the other comes up. It's like you're flossing your teeth. So Karen, remember the key is, is this bit here. Uh, if you miss that, then you're forcing yourself to try to force it to get under there. And you see how I never did it where it's here, then it's just through. So it's that. And both come down. Brain challenge. Picture a square. Right hand first. One corner, other corner, other corner, other corner. Notice how a square is, is kind of a circle. Right now, the other hand is going to be on every opposite corner. So, as this hand is here, this hand is here. As the right hand goes down, left hand comes up to this, so they're on opposite corners. As the right hand comes under, left hand goes across. Now, right here is the main part. This hand, top hand, softens, goes on the inside to that bottom corner as this hand goes to this opposite corner over here. So there's a dynamic tension and then it resolves itself. Corner, corners, corners. Top hand threads on the inside. So that's the main difficult part of the exercise. Square can then become a circle to where you just let them go around, but don't cut the corner. The circle has to include the corner. Now, final additional challenge, turn the body towards the top hand. Turn, closed, stay closed, open, turning the other way, stay open. Close, stay closed, open, stay open. Great job, everybody. Close, stay closed, open, stay
stay open. And like I said about the other practices, you see my stance. I'm not suggesting you do this stance, but what I'm saying is you could be here, or you could be here, or you could be here. So you're still working the cognitive challenge, and then over time it can become an actual joint opening challenge. Switching, get to a comfortable stance. So now instead of this here and there, switch. Cross, top hand threads on the inside, dynamic tension between these two corners, and then let it resolve. That one right there, where it's this corner and this corner, that's the one people usually miss. <clears throat> so we're here, here. Corner, corners. Now close and turn towards your right and then open, stay open. So this top hand we turn towards and stay there. And then we open and stay open. Close, stay close, open, stay open. Two more. Let's do one more. Seven. From standing facing forward, take your left arm point towards this front corner. So it's not pointing straight to the side. It's not pointing straight ahead. It's in between. Now bring it around in front, close to your collarbone. And uh, Tony, switch your arm, do your left arm. Left arm. Come across. Cross the collarbone close. So notice if this were a spinnable table, we'd be spinning that table in a certain direction. Keep that direction in mind. Bring your other hand in and spin the table the same direction. So now we're doing a different movement with this left hand, but the, the table, the wheel is going in the same direction. So this is close to the collarbone coming through, far, far away until it comes in. Now, pause here with this elbow bent and this hand out on that spinning table. Spin the table with both hands. This will confuse you until it doesn't. So if you're confused, good. If you're not confused, either you're not doing it right or you've broken through on it. But just get this idea of the hands following each other around, but they're always on opposite ends of the circle. And let's switch, spin the table the other way out far away from the body, and then in close, right next to your collarbone. And then out. Other hand, spinning the table the same way, it comes in close to the collarbone and goes far away. Now, pause.
They're just spinning around the table, but the hands are always at opposite ends of the table. And they're always moving. And pause. Shogun. Soft fists in slugger position, right? This would be boxer's position, sluggers. Like, like a slugging robot, right? Take a little step out, both feet turned out, both knees a little bent, focus on the qua remaining soft and open, and punch, punch. So the emphasis on this also in the back is not to be like this. Allow for that round, open quality which then allows for this turning, turning, okay? So we've got tail slightly down, knees slightly open. Now, as one fist goes out, there's a pause, open the fist, loose palms on both, and then slightly firm into a fist again as you pull one back and extend the other, and then they release. And then pull and punch, release. Pull, punch, release. Qua and waist. The other description of this is like you're holding two ends of a towel and kind of buffing your back, right? So there's a connection between the movements of the two hands rather than separate and disconnected. So finding that. And then once you find that, then start to let the fist flow out. And back, same stance, swing, swing. And notice there's a little turn of the quad, turn of the waist, turn of quad and waist. Turn of quad and waist, now rise. Turn of quad and waist, flow over the top. Turn, sweep under, slightly rise. Turn up over the top. Slightly sink. And remember, stance could shrink, and you could still be working on all the same wheels. The fists are very soft. They could even just be open palms if that felt better to you, or just very light fists. Switch directions. Double Hun Yuan fist circles. And finishing. Shovel. Open palm. Middle embrace. Taiji. Rock a little forward. Hands sweep a little forward. Rock back. Pung. Rising energy. Rock back, slide back and settle. G, driving forward energy. Palms face each other, they come down, under, up under the armpit, like you're gonna tickle the armpit, come forward with folded wrists, only to then flatten on the way down, right? So they come out like this, and then that in the hands. Pung. Slide back and settle, and then in the middle here, on softly press 
and then song. Again, remember, when you rock forward, part of you stays back. When you rock back, part of you stays forward. Pung, when you rock forward, part of you stays back, even as those arms float up. If you rock back, part of you stays forward. Part stays back as you rock forward. Part stays forward as you rock back, come over the top. Middle, through, one more, Bear washing paw. Each round slightly different than the one before it. As you let the liquid and chi creep into the cracks of the spirals of the movement. But you're still clearly doing brush knee because of the palm facing that way and sweep the leg. Brush knee and sweep the leg. And then they start to, instead of being connected like this, they start to have a looser connection. So it's like a one, two rhythm. Loose connection, still sweeping and brushing. And then the swirl of the stream as that outside hand starts to go around a circle just because it's got buoyancy around. And then that becomes the low jumping fish because it's, you know, starting to float up a little because there's so much good chi going through the blood and the interstitial spaces are so full of juice and the body is so buoyant and plump and relaxed. Higher jumping fish. But each time, make sure that hand goes down for a brush knee. That's what teaches us to soften, always soft. And then finally, brush knee and push, that little added sophistication of roll and fold, shift, turn, brush, push. Wing, roll, fold. Shift, turn, brush, push. Wing, roll, fold. Feel the qua and the waist as the main place where movement is occurring and the outer body is just moving efficiently soft. Last one, golden rooster, right foot being empty, steps a little behind, sit through that right leg as right hand settles, bend left elbow as you empty left foot and the foot just softly Challenge if you'd like. Foot totally disconnected from the floor. If that's able, then you can fold up that knee and get golden rooster. But remember, the key to this is sitting, sitting in the hip rather than lifting. It's sitting. Now bring that uh, lifted leg foot down. Heels touching or close to it, feet turned out, change, weight going through that other leg, left hand down, bend right elbow, empty foot floats out to softly touch. <clears throat> and then from there you have your added challenge of loose foot and maybe folding up. Teacup, remember chin slightly down, crown up sitting the hip. Now let's do the flowing version of this. The key to that is bring the right foot down empty, land it empty, 
and then change leg, change hands, and arrive. So nothing changes as you set this foot down. Everything simultaneously arrive on time. Right foot comes down, nothing changes. Everything simultaneous. Set it down, nothing changes. Everything. Now I want to add one challenge to this particular exercise where we do it walking backwards. So if you feel very unsteady today, don't. Just do exactly what we just did. Option, move forward about three or four steps. And I'll tilt the screen down so you can see the footwork. So the difference is from here, instead of just going there, I'm going back, but the key is I'm staying full in this leg, right? So I'm not going, okay? So from your rooster, and again, you could do this with the toe tap version. That might be actually the best bet for some of you. Just do the toe tap version, bring that foot back and land it just as far as you can, toe turn slightly out. As you shift back into that leg, the hands are changing. And this foot empties and you could just leave it there, toe tap or lift. Then without putting weight in that foot, you extend the foot behind you. So it's still no weight, but it's back there. Then change, rooster. Nothing changes, step back. Change, rooster. Nothing changes, stepping back, change, once more. Let's do that one more time. Walk forward in your space. Pick a side. Nothing changes, everything changes. Nothing changes, everything. Nothing, everything. Down. Now you should be somewhere near your original spot. Get there if you're not. Bear washing paws in the stream. Turn it into <clears throat> hands play with clouds. So now as you come across to the right, left hand sweeps leg vapor comes up. Then it's come across. Cloud leg vapor rain. Be clear on changing one leg and the other. Challenging now as you vapor and rain, bring the empty leg in, back out, change. When you vapor and rain, the leg should be so empty that it just glides in, can glide back out, no issue. Then change, glide in and out, change. Now let's walk sideways with this one. Listen close. So again, we've gone over this in this class, but, but also definitely in the walking class. Shift turn. So now right leg being empty, bring it in. Keep it in as the hands change, but it's still empty. Then change the weight through that right leg as it stays in close, turning. As you vapor and rain, step out, but without any weight in it. Then shift and turn. Bring that empty foot in as your hands change. Then change the weight as you turn. 
Empty foot's ready to step out. So we're traveling sideways, cross space, through space. And reverse. So just do an in out, come across, bring the foot in, turn. Undisturbed middle, floating, teacup, full to the brim, sitting atop the head is undisturbed. Let's go there and back one more time. In, out. See if you can feel an undisturbed place in your middle. And it's got a stability to it that's not held. It's a stability that's only available through letting go. Through softening through the joints, through the tissue. This looseness. That the more you train the looseness, the more you can do with the looseness. And it's my theory, working theory, that though Tai Chi wasn't made specifically for Parkinson's, what it focuses on and what Parkinson's has going wrong within the brain-body network, they're a match made in heaven in terms of the soothing, the loosening, the finding of movement through space rather than through obstacles. Training your ability to do more with this loose, soft, hydraulic layer, level, mode. I'm of the opinion that it could be one of the best things out there. Let's come back to center. And let's close with rock back. Rock forward. Think of this like a cleansing of the palate and also just an irrigation of all layers and a final sloughing off of that which you might be carrying in your psychosomatic network, right? Brain, nervous system, body. That we know we carry around a bunch what would it be like to master the art of carrying none of that, of removing addition by subtraction? Yielding, softening, loosening. Closing, wing, roll, hold. Settle the mind like a stone falling through a pond to come to rest naturally at the pond bed where you're not up in your brain thinking a million thoughts, but you're actually just a clear space. Seal the practice, one hand over navel, other hand. Soften shoulders, elbows, three natural breaths. And the Taoist bow representing harmony of our opposite polar energies, creating that little yin yang symbol. Thank you, everybody. Have a marvelous uh, rest of your weekend. If you have questions, feel free or, or epiphanies. Those are usually more interesting.